the express lifts panel. Behind, it's quite interesting actually because some manufacturers try to shield the bulb to stop the bulb from shining into other digits. Express have shielded this unit. Looks like they've machined these threads into various positions along here. Then there are two supports. So you've got a right angle here and a right angle here. Then in the middle, are these metal or plastic? They're metal. So they've got like a Z shape in there. Let me just see if I can remove one of these. These have got spikes, um, which stops you from removing these easily. But let's just have a look at one of these. I've got two to remove, so it's this one. And the one at the bottom as well. Now these probably go back in quite easy because they just sort of like push down and they grip. But yeah, my hands are getting filthy just trying to remove this. Okay, that one is almost off now. Yes. <laughs> Thought I broke it there, but it's not. Okay, so now we have this one. Um, now that one did break. Oh, well, one survived. All that just to see a bit of metal that's been bent in two places to form a Z. So that stops the light from coming out of this segment into the next one. Two bulb holders. So that's some kind of resistor in there. And then that unit in the middle there, if any power goes to these lamps, then that voltage is fed to the bell at the same time. So if I connect voltage on this bulb, this bulb would light and the bell will activate and if I were to do the other way around like this bulb then the voltage will also go to the bell and that's via that unit in the middle there so let's just pull some of these wires out and have a look see what we've got going on in here I'm just going to remove that bell because I'm not sure what's going on here so let's have a look at these ones first this must be a common wire so there's the common between the bulbs. So that is the common wire there. Then we have a wire. Actually, no. So when we put voltage on this, I might initially connect it to this one, run it through the resistor. Um, but these two wires here are the incoming wires that light up the lamps. And this is the confusing bit. We have a wire coming out of here which is the feed to run the bell that comes off that middle component. So the voltage comes down here to light up the bulb. Then the voltage is shared to this component here and that feeds the bell from either bulb. solenoid bell. Don't want to lose all the bits really. <laughs> so I'm not sure why there's two wires coming out of it. And it's a solenoid bell so if I can remove the gong, which it looks like we can. So that's the bracket that holds it onto the side. Now, if I were to remove that clip, I would imagine that it would either break or I won't be able to get it back on again, so I'm not gonna do that. But it does look like you can mount this in two directions. You can mount it like that or like this. All right, so now we know that the two red wires are common. Then the voltage is from the black one here, which comes from that device between the two bulbs.
So what voltage are we dealing with here? Okay, 100 to 130 volts, it's a 10 watt bulb. Does it work? Well, there's one way to find out. I need 110 volts and to wash my hands. Okay, so what we have here, this was one of the common wires going to the bell, I've just taped it up, that's um, really the same wire as that one, but it's joined down the bottom there. I'm disregarding that one because the other common wire for the bell is here. This is the common for the lamps that goes through this resistor here, and that just leaves this wire here which has now come out, let's put it back in again. This is the common without the resistor. So let's put that one in that middle terminal. So three commons on the left hand side and then the up and the down bulb on the next two connections. So now we just need 110 volts. Move aside everybody. I'm afraid this is as good as it gets. We have 110 volt transformer that's normally used on building sites. 240 in, 110 out. So this gives us 110 volts to play around with. But we're not going to be playing around with it for that purpose, just in case I'm wearing some gloves. One is this one. This one is the wire that goes to the left hand lamp and that will also transfer onto the bell. So in theory we should get a bell and a lamp. Let's switch this on. So I've got these gloves on and that will protect me a little bit, but I'm not intending to touch these wires at all. We have a hundred volts. Should be plenty. Right. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, we have a bulb. That looks nice actually. Check that out. Let me just put this wire in here properly. We haven't got a bell yet, but that could be down to the common wire, which would make sense actually. I may have to join these common wires together up here. If there is such a thing as a beautiful bulb, um, that is it. You can't quite see it on camera. Oh, there you go. See the filaments. That is a very old-fashioned looking bulb. Right, now to get the bell, I think we need to turn this off and reconfigure our common wires up here. Right, I'm going to take out the power wire. I'm going to power up the transformer first. Just so if something does blow up, I can quickly whip this wire out without having to turn it off. Here we go. Oh my goodness me! That was loud! Just wondering if that is the right voltage. And we have an AC voltage, and I think that that should have been a DC voltage. Because that bell is just ringing, and that will be because of the 50 volt ripple. So 
So we do need a DC voltage, um, but it's good enough that we can get the up lamp. Um, I won't put that cover on because I've got another one of these I want to show you in a moment. Um, but that, <laughs> that is the up bulb, but let's see if the down bulb works. Hundred and ten volts DC. That's what we really need. Um, I haven't got a rectifier, so I think we just have to go with this for the minute. There we go. Down and the lamp. <laughs> right. I think we've done this one now. I'm now going to move on to a panel which is much bigger than this. And it's wicked. <laughs> 